Hey guys, welcome back to another Wading Through Your Comments. I'm Wayward Minion 777. Let's get this party started. Our first comment is from Matt Van Haven. Patrick with the ultimate swindle. That was honestly super dang impressive and I cannot be mad at the immense planning and devastation involved in that play. Poor JP though, so sad. That's my impression of that face. So, uh, this is from Ultimate Chicken Horse, obviously. Um, well, I don't know if it's obvious. Ultimate Swindle, Ultimate Chicken Horse. But, uh, yes, Patrick, the devious little demon that he is, surprised and devastated us all with the most intelligent and creative play we have seen yet in our group. So, are we mad at him? No. Were we in shock? Yes. Was JP devastated at losing? Yes. But no, mad props to him. Everything he did was 100% fair, 100% within the rules. There was no cheats or hacks. It was flat out, he thought of something. We didn't pay attention. That's on us. Props to him. It was awesome. And quite frankly, for the sake of entertainment, I could not be happier that it happened that way. But I still do feel a little bad for JP. But. Come on, every game that we do competitively is at somebody's expense, so... Bound to be at his expense sometime, sorry JP, but... As they say in London, get wrecked, mate. Bloody hell. Do they say that in London? London fans, do they say that in London? Probably not. I tried. I tried to be cultured, sophisticated, I'm just not. Sorry. I tried. Our next comment is from Luna Gamer. Luna, why did I say Luna? What's such a weird emphasis? Luna, just Luna, Luna. Sorry, Luna Gamer says, Wade, do you know you and Molly are hilarious? And please answer, but are you and Molly married? Um, no, we are not married or engaged. We are dating. Uh, we've been together for a long time and it's something that is on both of our minds, I am sure, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, Molly and I are great for each other. Uh, a perfect couple in my mind. I could not be happier. And when the stars align and the time is right, I am sure we will go down that path. But we are not there yet. Though, at least you understand that Molly and I are dating. Some people still ask if she's my dog, my mom, my sister, my cousin, my friend, or et cetera, et cetera. But Molly is my girlfriend. We've been together, uh, I should know, almost four years now. I don't know the exact months. If I sat here and calculated what it would take to get to September 14th, which is our anniversary, I could tell you, but my brain got fried in the sunlight today and I don't know. Yeehaw. Um, I was visiting relatives in Kentucky and Indiana, so I picked up a little bit of Southern twang. I apologize if it's different for you to hear me like this, but anywho, not yet. I'm sure it'll happen someday though. Blue Ren one says, Wade spits on his stuff in nearly every video. I've noticed. Do you have a weird mouth condition that makes you it makes it so you only spit when you're recording? Um, no. However, I'm starting to wonder if I have some kind of like mental condition where spending time with Mark has made me develop his affinity for spitting when he talks. And that's worrisome because let me tell you, sit in a room recording soccer physics or uh. Uh, wrestle jump or anything table tug sitting there right next to him and he looks over and just talks it's like I can feel the saliva running down my face and after we're done I just want to go shower and cry and eat noodles you know things that you do after you can spit on <laughs> eat noodles uh, so no but I think sometimes whenever I'm like trying to hold back a laugh to actually talk uh, Instead of taking a moment to swallow the saliva, I just instead talk through it and then I'm kind of laughing like this and it just happens and spits everywhere. Um, especially on hard letters like T's and P's and sp I saw spit fly that time too. I don't know. I don't really have a good explanation for you. If I'm having a normal conversation, I don't think I'm like that, but sometimes I just get into a mood where I don't care and I'll spit. But that, that, I took care of the saliva there, so we're good. Melanie Bush says, It's always so weird hearing you swear, Wade. It's not bad, just... weird. Wow, 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 wow. Um, I, I, I can understand that. There are people I know that don't curse very often, but when you do hear them curse, it's like... 
And I guess for you guys, it's kind of like that for me, but I, I look back at like the first drunk Minecraft I did with Mark and Bob and the things that we said there, I'm still shocked that we said out loud. Uh, we didn't really have much of a filter then. Uh, I guess we had been drinking quite a bit too, which isn't really an excuse, but it is an explanation. Uh, so, there are times where I've slipped up and said the F-bomb or the S-word or this or that. And I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of swearing. It's not something like I think it's bad when I do swear. It's just something that I started be because my original plan was to go into law. Uh, I had this, you know, respectful uh, presence I wanted to have in front of groups and people because I was used to having to, you know, be professional in front of like a judge, jury, that kind of setting. So when I started my YouTube channel, my mindset was still that, you know, legal mindset and not so much the entertainment mindset. And trying to relax and be myself in front of you guys was something that took a little bit of time. And it came to the point that so many people were thanking me for not cursing, that it was like, well, if I started YouTube today, I'd probably be cursing up a storm, but I, I figure I'll just, you know, find other words to replace those things and do my best to not curse and just find in weird fillers like, you fudge brownie biscuit jerk, which was one of my lines during Outlast, I believe. So I say things like that or God bless America, Molly. So I, I found ways around the cursing, but it's not because I myself personally think cursing is not necessarily that bad but it is not necessarily a professional way to present oneself. And there are certainly instances like, you know, family gatherings or business meetings or job applications or things like that where you don't want to curse and whatnot because for some reason in our world, being proper is a thing. So in order to maintain that level of civility, we have to sacrifice our... Never mind, this is getting way too deep. There's no reason to go here. But I do curse, I just try not to as much as possible because it's been a thing that I've always kind of done on my channel and I feel like it would be a radical switch to all of a sudden sound like Mark when I'm playing things. And I don't really think cursing necessarily needs to make you funnier. Mark said the same thing. Like saying swear words sometimes will make uh, younger people especially laugh. But as we get older, we're like, you know, it needs the same thing, fudge and frick and you know, that kind of thing. And JP doesn't curse much either, but he says things like piss, which apparently piss isn't a curse word in some places, but I was always raised to believe saying piss is a curse word. I don't know. I'm curious. Is piss a curse word to you guys? I don't know. To me it was, but to other people it's not. Anywho, I should move on to another comment. I spent enough time on this one, but thank you, Melanie. Bambers said... <laughs> Bambers. That was fun for me. Bambers. That's fun to say. Say it. Bambers. You just say Bambers, and I guess then it would be, but Bambers. Just say it with Bambers. Sorry. I'm I'm apparently wired on something tonight. Could be Mountain Dew. Not that I'm sponsored by Mountain Dew, because I'm not, but that may or may not be what I was drinking before this. Bambers says, Bambers. So Gar is the move, the, 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 so Gar is their move or die nemesis, Patrick. Take out the I, add a K, you got it. Is the bane of ultimate chicken horse, and Wade is lord of pain in golf with friends. Well, true, true, used to be true, but Pat and Gar have apparently been practicing golf with friends nonstop for the rest of their lives, and usurped my throne, so now the only thing I have is Dead by Daylight, and we all know eventually I'll be usurped in that too, so the only game I'll be good at are the ones no one else plays with me. Wait, I'm not good at those two, either. English. Never mind. I was once good at games, but at least I'm still good at causing rage in people, like when I close the door and rake. You know, Nathan Stewart says, I like your new little picture, Wade. And Taz Tiger Gal says, so awesome. Mega props to the artist. The artist is Haley's Comet Art. And whenever I tweeted the picture, I did tag her in that tweet. And you guys should go give her lots of love and attention for that because she did a fantastic job. Um, she actually made my original profile picture too. The old uh, YouTube icon I had. So being as I did want to update it and get the beard in and whatnot, and people wanted that, I figured I didn't want to go too radical of a change, so I contacted her to do it again because she'd made the original one, and uh, she did a fantastic job on both. It, it, it's hard. Nostalgia wants me to go back to the old picture because, I mean, for four years, that's been what I've seen. Whenever I go to my YouTube channel, it's like that 
is me in my mind. But for the sake of change and time and evolution and the beard that I do now wear, I guess it's it was time. And I love the new picture, but nostalgia makes it so hard to not switch back because I love the old icon too. <laughs> it's so hard to choose. Change is hard. Change is hard. But it's an awesome picture. The Golden Spider Duck set. The Golden Spider Duck? What is that? Don't think I want to know. As much as I love seeing you two senselessly murder each other, and JP's appreciation for the music, it'd be awesome to see Pat and Gar in this game. So, that is true, it would be fun. I mean, we eventually brought um, JP and Gar to the rake. So maybe eventually we can do like a Freddy's video or whatever with uh, Pat Gar and JP as well, or a Gmod horror video in general. But it's kind of one of those things where it's hard, it takes away some of the jump scare, fear aspect. The more people you have in a horror game play, the less scary it tends to be. Um, if you're by yourself in a horror game, it's flipping terrifying. Having JP there makes it half as terrifying. But if you have four people there, then you're generally making jokes and laughing at their horror more than you're getting scared yourself. And there are good scare moments, like the rake, there's some good jump scare moments. But to maintain like kind of the multiplayer integrity of the horror games, I personally like having two people. But it is possible down the line I'll go back and get Patton. Uh, Gar, JP, and I would all do those kinds of things. So I don't know, it, it's possible, but there is this whole weighing of like the funny, enjoyable, and balancing that with keeping it somewhat scary because that's what the game is meant to be, despite our usual mockery of it. So I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe. It would be fun, I love playing with those guys. There's not a doubt in my mind that we'd have a good time, but it's something that JP and I kind of started doing on our own was the horror maps, and we don't plan on just doing Freddy's from now on. Once we get done with the Freddy's maps, I hope there's more Gmod horror maps for us to do. So, and people have left some suggestions for other ones that we've got, but we want to get through the Freddy's ones first, then we'll go back and find more of those. But anywho, it's possible. Bunny Warship says, like bunny like the, the rabbits, or bunny like my Twitch mod bunny. Both? Warship both? Why not? So close to one million. Can't wait! I don't know why your voice pitch suddenly changed there, but yes, uh, we are quickly approaching the 9,000, 9,000? 900,000 subscriber mark. Um, and the countdown to a million will truly begin. It's something that hasn't really hit me. I got really emotional at the 500,000 subscriber mark. Some people sent me some like appreciation videos and things and got me all teary eyed like I was at the end of Minion Lord. But it hasn't really hit me at how close we are to a million subscribers because it's not something I want to just assume is going to happen. I mean, all of the projections and uh, estimations and people and whatnot can tell me what they will about I'll hit it next month, I'll hit it two years from now, I'll hit it at the end of the year, whatever. Currently we are on pace to hit it sometime in the September to November range, probably October, but you never know. Sometimes growth goes kaput, sometimes it's way up high. I'm not really that worried about it. I'm happy where I am. I'm happy to be growing. I'm happy just to give you guys content and have you guys enjoy it. So when it happens, it happens, and it will be an amazing milestone to hit. I've already got some plans as far as what I want to do for that mark. Um, it's just something I don't think about for myself. I remember when Mark hit a million subscribers and I was so happy and proud of him. And I guess there's just a part of me that doesn't feel like I'm worthy of hitting that same milestone. I don't know, it's, it's silly and you guys will yell at me or whatever, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I still don't think of this as being real. What I do for a living and giving you guys content, it's not real. It's, it's a dream, you know, or it's, I don't know how to handle reaching these different things or having a fan game. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not. I'm not going to get too emotional. I'm going to hold steady this time. Oh, hello, microphone. Want to come say hi? Yes, you do. I, I hit my microphone. Uh, okay, that good. That was some comic relief to help me get out of that emotional tizzy I was dropping into. But uh, yes, we are getting there, and I'm very excited for it. But. 
my goal is to stay humble about everything. And Molly helps me keep me level-headed and everything. But I don't ever want to assume that just another 100,000 people are going to subscribe to me. Just because 1,000 subscribed you today or 400 subscribed yesterday or whatever it is, doesn't mean that they're all gonna, more people are gonna keep coming tomorrow. They're not numbers, you know? This isn't a number we're talking about. These are a million people, individuals. And maybe the only 892,000 people that are ever going to be interested in watching my content are already subscribed. Uh, or maybe they don't want to subscribe. Maybe they're going to leave. Maybe I, I'm no longer funny as of tomorrow, you know? I mean, these are people we're talking about. You guys could stop watching me anytime. And that's the great and horrifying thing about being a YouTuber is the fact that anybody can come watch your channel any day and anybody can leave your channel any day. I could be making a million dollars an hour tomorrow, or else I could be uh, losing a million dollars an hour tomorrow. Yeah, it's just, you don't know any given day what, and I've never made that kind of money, don't get me wrong. I'm <laughs> but it's possible. Anything is possible with YouTube, and that's the great and horrifying thing, is we could be millionaires in a month, or we could be jobless, homeless, and begging on the streets in a month. You never know what's going to happen, so you gotta play it smart whenever you're having success and always be prepared for that ride to come to an end because these are people. And that's... <laughs> people are subscribing. So it's very exciting, and I'm gonna move on now. Funny worship got me. Moving on. Mexican Muscle says... Cool name. Dark Souls makes me hate my soul. I would tell you not to hate your soul, and you shouldn't, but you know, after playing Dark Souls 3 for a while, I understand. It's like, what are you more angry at? Your inability, well, what am I more angry at? My inability to be good at the game, or how evil the game is designed to be? Like, it seems so simple. There are things in your head, you're like, okay, I'll do this. And then the buttons, your fingers, and your brain are just like <laughs> And what ends up happening is you spin right into the guy that you're trying to avoid and he's like Stab through your heart! And you're like, but no! I was gonna parry and stab and then stab you in the butt and get the kill! And he's like mm -mm. I stabbed you in the butt and now you're dead and it's like, but I had plans, and I knew what I wanted to do there, but my button fingers just didn't button. I hate my soul. I get it. Don't hate your soul. But I get it. SK Joker 21 says, Can we get Wade to do some sort of challenge video, and if he loses or something, he has to wear a minion outfit, like, from the movie? Dumb, I know. You are a sick and twisted individual, you know that? Of all the things you could have asked me to do, you want me to wear an outfit for one of those things? Do you know the headaches those little monsters have caused? Like, I have so many great t-shirt ideas, or like, cups, or napkins, or pants, or underwear, whatever it may be. But I've got to be so careful with the word minion because those little yellow Twinkies are taking over the planet and filling it up with their ba -ba -da -da! <laughs> That's sick stuff, man. That's sick. Omni Matt says, Good job, Wade. I'm proud of you. Most people die against the old wielding man. How do you. Uchigatana? Uch. Gucci Gucci Katana! Uh, wielding man. Except you cut out some footage of the fight. I would have liked to see all of it. LOL! Uh, there is a... Sometimes I do regret, like, whenever things get cut out, either Day does it or I do it, whatever else. And sometimes I regret leaving stuff in or whatever else. It's such a hard thing to figure out. And I'm never mad at her, and I hope I'm never mad at myself, really, for it happening. But there's just times when we have to make a judgment call. It's like we want a video to be around a certain length, or we want to make sure that you guys are going to stay interested. 
and sometimes a battle feels like it goes on too long, so we'll cut out part of it, and then later on it's like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that, you guys wanted to see the whole thing. Or sometimes I'll leave something in because I find it really funny, and then you guys are like, man, that one moment was pretty dull, wish you would have cut that out, and it's like, but that was the part I wanted to leave in. No, I should have cut it out, you're right, I'm so stupid! So, it's, it's such a judgment call based on individuals, and some of you guys are like, oh cool, yeah, we got through that fight, let's go see the next one. And some of you guys want more of like a Game Grump style where you see uh, everything, you know, you don't cut anything out. And it's a really hard balance. Uh, some people cut up, you know, you got like your scene editors of the world who do a lot of like short highlight type things, and you've got like your Game Grumps to the exact opposite, they do full out, you know, whatever, what you see is what you get. That's what happened, that's what they said, that's what was there. So, I'm kind of in the middle, see, I, I want you guys to see the best parts, but I want there to be more than that to the video. But at the same time, I don't want there to be everything there, because I want to post so much different, so much different, so many different games and a variety of games, that I don't want a particular series or a particular game to go on so long that it keeps me from being able to do other things. So it's really tough to balance, and so many people are like, wait, we want 45 minute videos, or so many people are like, wait, we want 5 minute videos, and I personally aim for like 10 to 15 minute videos. Some of them demand more, like the mail videos, this comments video, etc. I'll post like 20, 30 minute episodes of some horror games, um, and some videos come to be like 7 minutes or 5 minutes, so... It's all judgment calls, and I'm sorry whenever you guys are let down by me cutting something out or leaving something in, but um, I trust Day wholeheartedly with the editing she has done and been doing. I'm very, very impressed with her work and ability to sort through all of the crap that I throw at her to, to edit. Um, but it is always going to be a judgment call, and there's always going to be some people happy and some people upset with what is done. So I'm sorry, Omnimat. But there's probably somebody else out there that was happy that that was cut up a little bit. But it's just a judgment call we have to make that's hard. Belch. It's very hard. Nick Tism says, I've not put anything to intelligence. Tell us something we don't know, Wade. Lol, lol, lol. Yeah, I know. You guys yell at me all the time. See, okay, here's, here's the problem with the Dark Souls comments. There's nothing wrong with what you guys are telling me, but Gar and I got very into it, and we recorded almost all the episodes you've seen thus far, plus like one or two more that I've still got in reserve, within like two or three days. Back to back to back. And by the time you guys are like, Wade, try out more armor, more weapons, put points into this. It's like, I, I hate to tell you this, but there's been like five episodes since then that we already recorded. I'm sorry. So whenever I do get back to recording fresh episodes of it, uh, we will try to try out some different things. Try to try. Great job with the English there. Um, but at the same time, ultimately, not to sound egotistical, but this is my playthrough of it, and I, I, I want to be comfortable with my playstyle. And uh, this is my first time really experiencing a Dark Souls game, so trying to get comfortable with the dodging, and the striking, and learning the enemy's movements, while trying to also do commentary has been my focus. Trying to learn things like throwing the firebombs, maybe throwing a fireball or whatever, parrying would be cool. It's just not something I've been able to master yet. And it's also hard whenever I'm playing like 30 other games before I go back to record like part 13 or 14 of Dark Souls. And by the time I get back to it, I'll feel rusty again, and then I won't be comfortable experimenting with new things. And then by the time I am, we'll not be recording that for a little while. And it's just one of those things where I'm trying to be comfortable with how I'm playing it and get braver with fighting rather than experimenting with all this different stuff that I don't really have time to learn. <sighs> It's the battle of trying to be a variety YouTube channel instead of just posting similar content all the time, so... I'm sorry I let you all down with everything I do, but I try, I try, I try, I really try. I don't try very hard. I should try harder. Aether Ryu says, I am loving your Dark Souls 3 gameplay, especially your obsession with butts and humming the Jurassic Park theme at the same time. Love it! Uh, it's weird, because I'm... The butts are good, butts are fine and everything, but this is a weird conversation to have. Uh, I don't know that butts are my number one thing, but apparently to you guys, butts are, so I, I mean, that's fine, that's what you guys want to go with, and that's, that is what I guess I have presented to you, so the evidence points that way, but uh, I don't know, I, I really just go back to it because I find it funny and you guys comment about it and I find that funny, so it's just like, butts. 
And saying butts versus like boobs or something just, I don't know, it seems more PG for some weird reason. Like, there's nothing wrong with saying the word boobs, but it feels more like risque or something than saying butts. Everybody laughs at butts. I don't know if everybody laughs at boobs. Maybe. This is, we this is a weird topic. Butts, 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 boob, 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 butts, boob, 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 butts, boob, boob, butts, butts. And the Darkwing Crobat says, Wade's inner monologue as he stands next to the door. <laughs> this will really piss off Pat. That is almost word for word what goes through my mind. It's like, here's what I'm sitting there thinking. I'm like, all right, so how many times do I have to do this before Patrick reacts? <laughs> Stop with the door! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it really is. Sometimes, sometimes I deserve to lose in like Ultimate Chicken Horse or Golf with Friends or Move or Die because it's true. Like with JP and Five Nights at Freddy's Gmod or Gmod Horror in general, I like to just randomly kill him with the crossbow and hear his Ugh! or shoot the gun off to make him jump or go dead silent, make him scared. Or I'm playing with Patrick, like the Far Cry 4 stuff. If you haven't watched Far Cry 4 with Pat, you're missing out. Uh, just listening to him get rage and get angry or obliteracers whenever he went off oh, that makes me so happy or like when Gar's crushing us at some game and I find a way to go after him and just like knock him off of the side I just I enjoy that there's just something evil within me that enjoys the pain and suffering of my friends that's not a good way to put it the, the rage and gaming pain of my friends Graphite Dragon says, Wait, Niner Niner, this is general public speaking. We want more rake. Tell me what more there is to do in rake, and I will give you more rake. But honestly, I feel like we've exhausted almost everything we can do in that game. We've shot him, we've run from him, we've been slapped in the booty by him, we've broken the game, we've uh, killed him with traps, we've killed him at the base, we've killed him out in the woods, we've done various things. And trying to play legitimately on the multiplayer is almost impossible because, as people have noticed, if you get on top of the uh, the camper, it's like if he goes after you, he just gets stuck in this glitch pattern. And I don't know, sometimes you don't intentionally do it, but you're on top of the RV trying to spot him or something, and then you see him and you just naturally want to shoot or whatever. So I, I just don't know what else we can do unless the developer comes back and updates the game. But he hasn't, he hasn't fixed the bugs or come back or worked on it since like October. So I just don't know what else we have we can really do with it. But if you guys can give us something, then Wade Niner Niner and JPP, uh, Pat, thir Patrick 13, I don't know, I like Pat Pat, Patty Patty 2x4 or Pat Pat 2x4. I don't know why I like that, I don't know. Or Gar 69, 64, Gar Gar, Bar Bar, Jar Jar, Nar Nar, whatever. I, I would love to go back and do it, I just don't know what else we can do with it. Daisy Delano says, hopefully I said that correct. I don't have useful comments on his video, so I never make it into the reading your comments. With strategy, I'm no good. Still love all of his videos so much. Um, I don't really know what kind of comments make it into comments videos. I really just read through and I'm like, this comment. Uh, Molly helps me pick out a whole lot of them. I'm not trying to blame her or whatever else. I'm trying to give her credit, actually, because she does a great job. Really, it's just a matter of trying to find, like, a few comments from different types of games or different types of videos. Like, some of these have been from horror, some have been from comedy, some single player, some multiplayer, some uh, the other reading your comments video, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's really just a matter of trying to balance and find, I don't know, comments that say or ask different things. Um, sometimes there's repetition on people who post comments. Sometimes there's repetition on types of comments or things said just because it's hard to remember, you know, what I posted, what comments I posted in my third reading your comments video versus my fifth or tenth or whatever else. So I don't know that there's a set recipe for getting into one, but you made it in with this comment this time. So who knows? There you go. See, you never know. Anybody can make it in any time. Uh, don't get distraught. Just keep commenting if you want to make it in and don't comment for the sake of getting into a reading your comments video. Make a comment about that video and if it's something that, I don't know, jumps out for some reason or another, there's a good chance it'll make it in. Whether it's something funny, something insightful, some kind of question, you never know what'll make it. So don't get your hopes down or whatever else. Just keep your chin up and comment if you want to, don't if you don't. 
There you go. I'm sorry if you feel like there's some kind of set recipe, not that I know of. Mediocrity me, me <laughs> Mediocrity's Miu says, Remember when games didn't release to anyone until they were polished and pretty much done? And Hannah Nicole Jackson says, Well, I think most do it now so they can get backers and money to help finish the game, because a lot of game developers are just starting out. And th there's merit to both of these points. So, um, there is early access titles that release and they sell their game for five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever have you. Um, then there's some games that'll sell for $60, like uh, Overwatch, for example, sell, I think it was $59.99. And then they had like the betas beforehand. So you got to play the alpha, the beta or whatever. And then you got to play the real game when it was fully released. And then you got like your games like um, like a Seven Days to Die, which released a long time ago and went through a lot of alphas or whatever else. And I, I, I don't know if they're still in alpha or beta or what they're moving into now, but they're, they're hoping to eventually or they might be moving into the final product at the moment. I'm not sure, but there's a variety of reasons gaming companies do this. And you guys have kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, sometimes it's because a lot of them are indie developers and they want to see if it's worth complete. I mean, it takes a lot of time and money and energy, I'm sure, to go into making some of these games. And if people aren't gonna play your game, why bother finishing it? Might be their mindset. So why not release an earlier build, see what the interest is, uh, maybe build up some revenue to help get some more help in there to get you better sound quality, better voice acting, or better graphic design, plot design, whatever have you. Um, and some people might just do it for the money. Maybe they say, hey, I'm gonna make a crappy game and throw it out there and hope to just reel in the dough. I don't know. I, I'm not inside game developers' heads. I don't know what each individual game developer is thinking when they do it, but there are going to be people that abuse the system. That's inevitable. People will abuse the system if there's a way to abuse it. It's sad, but it's a truth of life. Um, but I feel like a lot of them do it because they want to have some support so that they can continue working on their games. Most games, and I can't think of any off the top of my head that don't fall into this category, but most games that I've done, all that I can think of, um, when they go into early access, and they sell their game and then people stop buying it, they've continued to work on it. I mean, there's still updates for games that I didn't even remember being, uh, seeing in like years. So a lot of times game developers do continue that. Most times they do. So I can't say they're all doing it for greed or whatever else. I think a lot of it is indie developers that don't have the backing of a company like a Bethesda um, that just need help. So that's why they do it. But other times, uh, game developers want feedback from their fan base, say, okay, I have an idea for a game, but I'm not gonna be the one playing it, you are, so tell me what you want to see in it. Here's what I've got so far. That could be another reason. But as I said, we're always gonna have that skepticism because there will always be the inevitable bad egg that abuses the system just because they're like, hey, here's a game, give me money. Oh, not working on it anymore, done ski. And I don't think like Rake or anything like that, I'm, I'm not trying to hint that there's a game I've played that was like that. Sometimes people just, you know, move on to other projects in life. And the guy that worked on Rake, uh, people wanted multiplayer for a long time, he didn't cave, and he finally did cave, gave us some multiplayer. But he worked on the single player, he gave updates, it's not like he just abandoned the game. So I'm not trying to say that or hint that, just in case you guys are thinking. Um, there's really no one I can think of that's done it, but I'm sure there are examples. So, I don't know, that's my feelings on that. Uh, Serena, Serena, hopefully I'm saying that right, says, This game really brings out Wade's true colors. This must be from Dead by Daylight. Uh, let me tell you, there are times that you record with a group of people, and you have a great time just playing together, co-oping together, and there are times you play with a group of people, and you just get so filled with rage and anger that you find a game like Dead by Daylight where you get to play a killer, and they are helpless people trying to start a generator, and just unleashing that rage and anger inside of a game where, you know, you're not causing any real harm, but at the same time, you're hearing their screams of agony. I sound like such a monster. Makes you feel so much better. Ah, oh, there's just something about it. I probably need to seek mental help. I think I'm insane. No, but, but it really is. It's fun to play with friends. It's fun to terrorize friends. These are people I know when I play with all the time. I talk with them. Like, you know, even after a rage game, we'll message and laugh with each other. It's not like we're really that angry at each other, but it's easy to play off that way, I guess, a little bit. It's, it is an easy way to, like, you know, let off some steam to play games. It's a fantastic way to let off steam, in my opinion. So hopefully I'm not like a serial killer deep down that's going to emerge one day. I really hope not. That'd be horrifying. But uh, it, it is fun to torment my friends in Dead by Daylight. 
more fun than it probably should be. Is that creepy? I was, I was trying to be creepy. I thought it was creepy. Captain Trip says, The gate exits will show for a small amount of time once the generators are up, dead by daylight. There are, however, <laughs> however, however, other exits as well. Those ones will not show up and you have to find them. This might be a glitch, I'm not sure, but sometimes you can use those other exits without getting all generators online. Yeah, I know Wade will probably never read this, but whatever. Well, once again, I have proven to you that even when you don't think I will see your comment, I do. I see everything you guys have to say. I know. Just because I don't always reply to a lot of comments, sometimes I reply to too many. You never know what's going to happen any given day. But I see all. I am the all-seeing eyes. I. Eyeballs. I see a lot more than you guys think I see. Um... But that's interesting. I do know that there's like a uh, trap door that we've found that doesn't show up. But if you find the trap door, you can escape even if not all the generators are online. I don't know of any others at the moment. There might be. There probably are. But we know of the trap door. We know of the, like the two gate exits. Um, I'm not sure if it's a glitch or not either. I don't think it is. I think the trap door is meant to be there and opened if you're like the last person alive. But um, yeah, uh, it's hard to say what that game's going to be like whenever they release the final here in a couple weeks, a week. I guess it's less than a week now, but... Uh, Captain Trips, I did read your comment, as well as the ones above and below it. I see all. It's my YouTube channel. I, I care about you guys. I read what you have to say. It means a lot to me. All right. Uh, here we go. Just Another Sky says, um, not all hair clips. Only the metal ones are our weapons. Derek J. Brock's second says, I can agree on that. So this is from Whack the Creeps, where a lady in a bar, go, she goes to a bar with her boyfriend, her boyfriend goes for a smoke or goes for something, and she's left alone with the bartender, I guess there's a bouncer, then there's two kind of creepy guys that are like creepily hitting on her and like oogling her, and she goes to like pick stuff up and they're like, Ugh! real creepy kind of behavior, real creeps, hence the Whack the Creeps name. And at one point she takes out a hair beret and kills them with it. So. Just other guys say, not all hair, clip, hair clips, only the metal ones are our weapons. I don't know why I died there while saying that. So I'm assuming what she's saying is girls with metal hair clips know that they've got weapons that could kill. And poor Derek here. Maybe not poor Derek. I don't know. Derek, I hope you're not a creep. If you're not a creep, then you're poor Derek. But if you're a creep, maybe you deserve that hair clip. But if you're not a creep, then Derek has seen some shiznit with hair clips. Things he hasn't forgotten. With great power comes great responsibility, ladies. You be careful with those hair clips. For all of our six. And guys, don't be creeps. Just don't do it. Respect goes a long way. Master Gaster said, oh, <laughs> why'd Gaster make me laugh? I don't know. Master Gaster says, you can pick the baby up with the baby grabber and drop him through the wall. Hint, that is how to get into the shed. Okay, so it sounds like Patrick and I are gonna have to get back to Who's Your Daddy. We're gonna have to use the daddy to crawl. I saw that daddy can crawl. And we're gonna have to try to break into that flipping shed. So, we'll try it, all right? We'll try it. Who's Your Daddy is not done yet. Don't you worry. Uh, Kareth Aisling. This might be, I think this is the last comment of the video, so. Cue, last comment of the video, sound effect, screen. Do we have one of those? It might just be me standing, sitting here, pointing. I don't know what it will be. I'll be curious to see what Day does with that. Q, last to comment of the video screen. Sound effect. Combo. Oh, you're right. That was awesome. Whatever just happened. Did anything happen or did I just look stupid? I don't know. That's the scary part of having someone else at it is you don't know what they're going to do to you. Um, Kareth Aisling says, missed opportunity in the title. Baby Q. Ha! I did miss the opportunity for the pun. It always amazes me that I have been around so long that you guys are now so corrupted that you think in puns as well. And now the apprentices have surpassed the mass. Like JP. JP can out pun me now. And it is terrible. It's great, but terrible. What I have done. The pain I inflicted for years to Mark and Bob and Jack and Yami, etc, etc, with my bad jokes is finally coming back because now you all are so well versed in the art of torturous bad jokes and puns 
that I have to witness them and feel the pain now. And I also have to feel the regret of knowing I missed out on a great pun. Baby Q. Moment of silence for the missed puns that I've had in my life. <laughs> All right, that's enough for that. Well, thank you guys so much for another awesome couple weeks of comments. Um, I'm looking forward to doing another comments video here uh, two weeks from today, which will be Wednesday the 22nd, probably. I think, yeah. So that'll be after Indie PopCon. For those of you that are going to Indie PopCon, I can't wait to meet you there. If you can't make it to Indie, I'm also planning on going to Fandom Fest in Louisville, Kentucky, and PAX Prime in Seattle, Washington, and TwitchCon in San Diego, California this year. So I hope to meet you at one of those, several of those, if you can make it. If not, hopefully one day down the line in the future. For now, thank you all so much for joining for another Waiting Through Your Comments video. Stay tuned for more soon. Keep commenting. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. It is appreciated. Until next time. See you guys.